final message will show no compromise. No compromise. Bobby, can you put that up on the board, please? No compromise. So many of you, what about compromise? This is what the definition of the word compromise is. Tonkan. To cop out. To dishonor. To give in. To ruin. To weaken. Or to sell out. That's what the word compromise means. It means to sell out, to weaken, or to give in. That's what it means. Now, I want to say this tonight, please, and I want you to listen to me. Listen to me good. We all know and we all believe that God is working. We could all say amen to that, that God is working, that the Spirit of God is moving, that people have been touched by God, that the Holy Spirit has been touching people's lives, that people have been turning back to the Lord these past few weeks, a month, whatever it's been. Ewar Balidevleski is touching people's lives. The presence of God has been filling people's homes. People's been praying. People's been reading the word. People's been worshiping in their homes. Manus have been repenting of sin. People have been coming back to the Lord. And we thank the Lord for it. Hallelujah. God is moving and God is working. But listen to me tonight. Please listen to me good when I'm about to tell you. And you got to catch what I'm telling you tonight. Kaikarolo del Buchi. Where God is working, so is the devil working. Not for a second because Drago le so Not need for a second because Drago le dus manosko kale manus avem papli kadel kale manus gujimpe kale manus worshiping le devles kale manus demping utrao papli kadel. Not getting sent to me for a second because dus mano he's happy about this. And this is why we need to be very, very careful, Akana. Especially in Ekalajesa. They're not Atajuas. They're not Peras. They're not to leave God, leave down our guard. Because listen to me, it's very easy, Akana, the Atajulo Manus. It's very easy, Akana Omanus, to leave down his guard. It's very easy, Akana Omanus, the Abel Dinardoka Tarodusmano. Because what happens is after a while, please listen to me very carefully. After a while of being faithful to God, after a while of praying, after a while of reading, after a while of, of worshiping God, and after a while of being faithful to God, you start thinking that maybe I'll take a little break. Maybe I'll step back a little bit. I won't go on the lives that much anymore. I won't read the Bible that much. I won't pray every day. I won't put on the Christian songs today. And what happens is you start loosening up and you start giving in and you start slowing down on your devotion and on your faithfulness to God. Am I talking to anybody tonight in this room? Does anybody know what I'm talking about tonight? You see, what's happening, we're letting down our guard. And what happens is you open up the door. You got to listen to what I'm telling you tonight. We open up the door. Jimmy, what are you saying? Yes, yes, yes. Because listen to me. When you're not spending time with God, when you're not seeking God, you're seeking other things. You're starting to compromise. Prayer becomes less important. A water becomes less important. Worship becomes less important. And now you open up the door to compromise. They are tajos, they perez on obezach. And this is exactly Magapram Bagapea, so Mangal Karolo Duzmano, Amen. So Trubulti Arakazamin. This is a warning, Magapram Bagapea. Tonight's a warning. Trubulti Arakazamin. They're not tajos, they're not peraz, I tena me caso Duzmano, they did a little marusuru. Listen to what Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says. Tonkan, Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says these words. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not conform to this world. You see, Ilumia Magapra Magapea wants to conform us. He wants to place us in his mold. Oh, Ilumia Avra wants to.
wants to put pressure on the believer, on the Christian, and he wants to make us compromise, and he wants us to conform to the world. This is what this is what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to conform. He wants us to look like everybody else. He wants us to act like everybody else. He wants us to talk like everybody else. He does not want you as a Christian to stand out. He does not want you to be different. But he wants you to conform to be like everybody else, like the rest of the world. But look what the rest of the verse says. But be transformed. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you, by testing, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Listen to me, to get conformed, it comes from the outside, but to be transformed comes from the inside, hallelujah. Transformation comes from the inside, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. And tonight, if the Holy Spirit of God is living in you, if you are a born-again believer, understand something. You have all the power. You have all the power of God living in you. That power of God that's living in you can transform your life. And you can stand out for Jesus Christ. You could stand out and be transformed and make a difference in this world. Hallelujah. Now tonight I want to talk about four people tonight, that four young men who did not compromise. They said no to compromise. They would not give in. They would not bend. They would not, they would not compromise their faith. They trusted in God. And because they trusted in God and they would not compromise in the most hardest times of their life, God blessed them for it. And what I'm trying to tell you tonight is this. Don't think for a second, if you stand up for faith, if you stand up for truth, if you do not compromise, you will see the blessings of God in your life like you've never seen before. Hallelujah. Now tonight we're going to talk about four young men, and we see them in the book of Daniel. Now the book of Daniel is a story about Israel, how Israel was taken into captivity. Tonkan. Israel was taken into captivity by, by the Babylonians. King Nebuchadnezzar came into Israel and he took over Israel. He destroyed Israel and he took, he took the Israelites into captivity. Andali peste ani peskutem. Now, God allowed this to happen. Because of the disobedience of the people of Israel. God gave them warning after warning after warning. If you don't repent, but they never listened. They never repented. God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in. So God took Israel into captivity. And he took them into captivity for 70 years. Now, when he took them into captivity, he chose four young men. These young men, he brought them in so that they can be his personal servants. Leska, to be close to him. And he chose the best of the best. Now, Daniel chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 says these words. Tonkan, tonight we're going to look at Daniel chapter 1, the first chapter of Daniel. Uh, it's a lot of reading tonight, but I think it's important that we catch this. Verses 3 and 4 of chapter 1 says this, Then the king ordered Aspenaz, the chief of staff, to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah's royal family and other noble families who had been brought to Babylon as captives. Select only strong, this is the order, kataro, kataro amparato. Select only strong, healthy, good-looking young men. He said, make sure they are well-versed in every branch of learning, are gifted with knowledge and good judgment, and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and the literature of Babylon. I want you to go and choose for me the best of the best. Le mai go javed, le mai sukar, le mai zurale, le mai saste. Mangaftu te aned leandra, and mangaftu te sucharazle. Sa amaro zakono, man after they sucharazli, amaro divano, sucharli, iso so das duma, isa iamari sheep. He wanted them to learn their language. Now, why was he doing this? Because he wanted these young men to conform, to conform to the ways of Babylon. Please listen to me tonight. He wants them to conform to the ways of Babylon. And in verses 5 and 6, Tonkan, 
The king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchen. Shinadaling al-chabay katar peskis kafidi from his own kitchen o amparato. They are to be trained for three years and then they are to enter the royal service. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four of the young men chosen, all from the tribe of Judah. The food that he eats from his own table, from his own kitchen, that's what he was offering them. What he was offering them was the best of the best. And let me just say this tonight. Please listen to me. He always offers us the best that he can offer. He puts it on a beautiful platter. And he makes us desire the best things of the world. He makes us desire and to seek the best things of the world. But let me just tell you something about the best things the world have to offer. The everything the world has to offer, the only purpose of it and the only reason why you're being offered it is so that it can take you away from God. Verse 7. The chief of staff renamed these Babylon with these Babylonian names. Daniel was called Belshazzar. Hananiah was called Shadrach. Mishael was called Meshach. Azariah was called Abednego. Tongan. Not only did they try to influence them to teach them the ways of Babylon, but now they also tried to teach them their language. And then on top of that, he's trying to offer them food from his own table. And then to go a step further, please listen to me. He goes as far as changing their names. Even changing their names. Totally, they bustran kataravile. Totally they bustran penga devles. Totally they bustran consoling udel. They bustran pengo pachamos. They put they they bustran pengo faith. I they bustran pengo del. Isn't that what the devil wants to do to all of us tonight? Isn't that the work of Satan? Isn't that the work of of isn't that the work of our enemy, Mugapra Mugapea? He wants us to forget who our God is. He wants us to forget where we came from. He wants us to forget our faith. He wants us to forget who God is. He wants to do everything he can to get us to forget who we serve and who is our Lord. That's right, brainwash. I'm my question tonight is this. Has the world changed your name? Has the world changed your name? Please listen to me tonight, please. Have you allowed the world to change your name? Have you allowed the world de Pawel Chiro Naf? Jimmy, what do you mean? Maybe once upon a time you was known as a servant of the Lord. Maybe such a reputation, Kasana's servant Lady Vlesko. I Jana Saboga. Sai Lumia Janinas to Kakoma Nusa's servant Lady Vlesko. But maybe now you're not known, known anymore as a servant of the Lord. Maybe you're known as a troublemaker. Or maybe as a servant of God, but now you're known as a, an alcoholic. Maybe you were known as a great worshiper. Maybe once upon a time, Jean Losan is as a worshiper. Kako Manus is a great worshiper of the Lord. Wherever he goes, wherever she goes, she worships the Lord. This person always got the praises of God on his mouth. He's a true worshiper of the Lord. But maybe now your name has been changed to a drug addict. Maybe Manus Mutondre Kako Manus. Trabingo. Kacha, she's always stoned out of her head. She's a drug addict. What happened? You let the world change your name. Maybe once upon a time you was known as a deacon. Maybe once upon a time you was known as a preacher. Maybe once upon a time you was known as a choir member. Maybe once upon a time you was known as an usher. 
Maybe once upon a time you was a great preacher or a teacher of God's word. But maybe today you're known as a compulsive gambler or maybe an adulterer. The world wants to change your name. Please listen to me. Don't ever allow. Please listen to me, please. Don't ever allow the world to change your name. Don't ever allow the world to change who you are. Don't ever allow the world to change you. Don't ever allow the world. If you are a worshiper, may you always be a worshiper, always for the rest of your life. If you are a servant of the Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will always be a servant of the Lord, a mighty servant of the Lord. If you are known as a worshiper, I pray that you will always be a worshiper. I pray that the praises of God and the worship of God will always be on your lips. If you are a preacher of the word of God, I pray that you will always preach the truth of God's word wherever you are, wherever you go. In Jesus' name. But you see, how, do, how does someone get to this point, guy? How does someone get to the point where their identity is stolen? How does someone get to the point to where they're no longer known as servants of the Lord and they're no longer known as worshipers and they're no longer known as, as, as people of God? It starts with small compromises. Small compromises. Please listen to what I'm telling you tonight. Small compromises. You know what? I want to become a drug addict. It doesn't start off like that. It's small compromises. It's opening up the door to small compromises. You know what? I'm just going to become an alcoholic. Not for a second. Not It starts off with small compromises. One step at a time. If you don't become an alcoholic overnight, it starts off with one drink. One drink starts to two drinks. Two drinks becomes four. Four becomes eight. Before you know it, you've got liver disease because you're an alcoholic. Drug addict starts off with one pill. Remember something. Every drug addict that ever became a drug addict, started off with one pill. One pill. They took one pill and then one pill led to two, two led to four, four led to eight. And then the end up is they overdose and some of them die because they opened up the door to compromise. That's why we need to be careful. Tonight is a warning. Not to leave down our guard and not to give him the opportunity. We need to stop him in his tracks and say no. Say no to compromise. I'm not giving in. I'm not turning away. I'm holding on to God. I'm holding on to my faith. No matter where I am and no matter what's going around me, I'm going to stay obedient and stay faithful to my God. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says this. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself. Catch this tonight, please. What a man of God. What a powerful, mighty man of God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you and I can take this characteristic. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would learn from this beautiful example in Scripture from this great man of God named Daniel. But Daniel was determined. He was determined. He made up his mind. He was not going to give in. He's not, was gonna, he was not going to break. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. And Daniel and, his, and the boy said, no, we don't want it. We will not take it. We're not going to give in. Now why? Why not give in? Most likely why is because Kako Habe was probably offered to idols. You got to understand something. He's in a foreign land. He's in a place where people worship other gods. They don't worship Jehovah. They worship other gods. They worship demons. They worship Kaber Prami. And they would offer them to their gods as sacrifices. Daniel and made a decision. They made a choice. They were not going to compromise. They said, we will not eat this food. This food has been offered to idols. We will not eat it. They asked for permission not to eat the food. They were in a bad place. Please listen to me. You got to catch this tonight. 
They were in a bad place. They were in an ungodly place. And, but they were still godly. They were in a bad place. They were in an ungodly place, but they were still godly. The Bible says something, be in the world, but don't be part of the world. Be in the world, but don't be part of the world. Listen to me tonight, please. We live in an ungodly world. We live in an ungodly place. But why does it count the most for us to be godly is right now. Right now, we need to stand out for God. We need to shed the light of God. We need to be the salt of the earth. We need to stand out now. This is what we need to do. Omasho, Tonkan, please. Omasho, he lives in the ocean. He's born in the ocean. A fish is born in the ocean. He swims in the ocean. He lives in the ocean. But then Jazai said, Omasho. Now the ocean is salt water. He lives in the salt water. He is born in salt water. He swims in salt water. And then you catch the fish out of the salt water. And once there's Omasho Avri, Shinetlis, Mudaradlis, I pick Kazlis. You cook the fish. And what is the first thing you do before you eat that fish? You put salt on him. You put salt on him. Tozlon po masho. But why? O masho akajilo on o lon? Trail on o lon? I let us avri on the lon. No makana pekazles, what do you have to do? You have to add salt. You know why? Because even though he's in the salt, even though he's living in the salt, even though he was born in the salt, the salt never got in him. You got to catch this tonight. The salt never got in him. He was in the salt, but the salt never got in the fish. You got to put salt on him. And what's the point tonight? Even though we live in the world, even though we were born in this world, even though we operate in this world, the world should never be in us. You can be in the world, but the world should never be in you. The boat needs to be in the water. The water should never be in the boat. What happens? The boat sinks. And you see, I hate to say this tonight, but that's what happened to a lot of people. That's what happened to a lot of believers. And what happens? They sank. Where are they today? They faded into the rest of the world. They look like the world. They act like the world. They talk like the world. They operate like the world. Yes, they might call themselves Christians, but their life has nothing to do with Christianity. Their life has nothing to do with Christ. There's no way in the world you can tell the difference between Omanuska is Shabli Devlesko and Omanuska is Shabli Lanumako. We can't tell the difference anymore. Who is a Christian and who is a non-believer? Because they act alike, they talk alike, they do everything alike. One, the same thing that everyone else does. Yes, the so-called Christian is doing drugs like the person who doesn't even know Christ. The so-called Christian is in the casinos the same way the person who doesn't know Christ. The so-called Christian is drunk and an alcoholic just like the person who doesn't know Christ. Why? Because And you can't tell the difference. Listen to me, please. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way God intended it. God saved you. He sanctified you. He put his Holy Spirit in you so that you can be different from the rest of the world. So that you can stand out for Christ. I only got a few minutes left. Let me get to this. These boys were probably 15 or 16 years old. Tonkan, this is a very important point. They were young men. They were young boys when they were taken in. But how did they know this? 15, 16, 17 years old. How did they know to have such great 
faith. How do they know not to give in? How do they know to say no? How do they know to not to compromise in their faith? How do they know they're not Chanka Kochabe? Let me tell you why tonight. Because these boys grew up in a godly home. These boys grew up in a home that taught the word of God. These boys grew up in a home that kept godly standards. These boys grew up, these boys probably had parents. Kaisas very devlikane, very swunsume. And probably as young boys, Sichardele, a war bale devleski. No makane parile when they were of age. And there was an opportunity for them to fall in because their minds were filled with the truth of God's word. And their hearts were filled with the truth of God's word. And because they knew God. And they had a genuine relationship with God. Even as a child, when the time came to compromise, they said no. They said no to sin. They said no to the works of the devil. They said no to the word. Why? Because they were filled with the word of God. And they lived by godly example. We need to grow up our kids knowing God. Our families need to know Jesus. Our children need to know the word of God. We need to fill our kids' hearts with God's word. We need to fill our kids' hearts with God's with, with God's word. We need to fill their minds with Ochachi Mosley de Vlesco. They need to know God. We need to bring them to a relationship with God. Even if they're babies, right now you fill them with Ochachi Mosley de Vlesco. Why? Because kind of barona and the opportunity comes for them to compromise because they grew up in a godly home and they grew up knowing the word of God and they grew up knowing God. When the chance comes for them to compromise, they will say no. They will have true, strong faith, Arodel. They will not compromise. They will not give in. Because the word of God filled their lives. Dixomotope, Proverbs 22, 17. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Train the kids right now. Fill them up right now. He will not turn away from it. Hallelujah. Influence our kids right now in the truth of God's word. And in verses 14 and 15, I only got a few minutes left. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. And at the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had not eaten the food assigned by the king. Hallelujah. They did not give in. They said, no, I have vegetables and that's it. And after 10 days, after 10 days, my Zuralesas has won. My Sastes has won. They have won. The people ate the defiled food. These men were healthier than them. Let me tell you something tonight. You've got to listen to me, please. When you stand up for the truth and you don't compromise and you don't give in, maybe you might be made fun of. Maybe people might look down on you. Maybe you might be persecuted for it. Maybe people might dent up for it. Maybe you might look like a fool to the rest of the world and you might look like a fool to your friends. But understand something, please. If you don't listen to anything else I say, if you don't remember anything else I say tonight, remember this. When you don't compromise and you stand up for truth, God will bless you for it. God will bless you for it. God will bless you. God will bless you. You will see the hand and the power of God in your life because you stood up for truth and you did not compromise. You did not give in to the world. Not getting sad for a second that if you don't compromise, nothing good's going to come out of it. No, if you don't compromise and you stand up for truth and you stand up for God and you keep your faith, God will bless you for it. You will see the hand and the blessing of God on your life. And in verses 19 and 20, I end here. The king talked with them and no one impressed him as much as Daniel Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the royal service. Even the king consulted them in many matters, requiring wisdom and balance and judgment. He found them 10 times, Asun, he found them 10 times more capable than any of the magicians, enchanters in the entire kingdom. God placed them in a place and God filled them with wisdom and knowledge and they were found to be 10 times, my Gojaved, 10 times more capable than anybody else in the kingdom. Listen to me. When you stand up for truth and don't compromise, you will see the hand of God. God will bless you for it. So don't grow weary in doing good. 
God will bless you for it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We have a prayer list. We want to take a moment. We got a few minutes left. Bobby, you want to read off those prayers? Pastor Baby Dirk for healing. Frank and Ashley. John and Sam. Desiree to get out of prison. Mark Mitchell, Jason and Eddie. Frank Markle for healing. The Hannah's list, the autism list. Shawahu Brandy in the hospital. Uh, Baby Madison for healing and pray for Victor and Fate. Amen. Let's pray tonight. You heard a prayer request. If we missed your prayers tonight on the board, um, maybe we didn't mention them, but the Kalio Dil. Uh, Archie Adams for surgery tomorrow. Pastor Jerry tonight, we need to pray for him tonight. Healing, restoration. Tonight we're going to pray. You heard the prayer list. We read off the names. We are going to pray tonight in faith and ask God to heal uh, baby Anna. Healing in Jesus' name. For Dirty Face tonight, we pray for Frankie tonight. I pray for Kiki Wan, for for uh, Gilda White tonight, for, for, for Diane, Pastor Danny's wife tonight. We're praying for Marsha for healing tonight. For Danny in LA, we're praying tonight. So, Amen. Would Jesus name? in the name of Jesus, healing develop. Pesaka kalamanus. Mugodad, you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. So tonight, Lord, I pray develop. They tradish to sasti moz, Mugodad. I pray develop healing develop. Elende, Mugodad. You sent your word, Lord, and you healed all of our sicknesses and all of our diseases. So tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, I pray healing develop. Lord, we're praying, Father, in Jesus' name, that we get praise reports, that we get testimonies, Devla, that things would turn around, Lord, all for your glory, Devla. Let it be done tonight, Lord. Lord, I pray, Devla, that you would increase our faith, Mugodad, that we would trust in you, that we would not give up, that we would not give in, Mugodad. I pray tonight, Devla, for everyone in the room tonight, Lord, Lord, that we would learn not to compromise, but that we would stand strong, Devla, that we would be steadfast, Devla, in our confession of faith, Mugodad. That we would not turn back, Lord. But that we would always go forward to Sa Devla. That we would always stand up for the truth. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your presence, Devla, will always be evident in our life. They teach you us, Devla, Tuka, that your light would shine upon us, Devla, and through us wherever we go, Mugodad. We pray, Lord, that we would make a difference in this world, Mugodad. That this world would not change us, but that we would change the world through the power of your Holy Spirit. Let it be done, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.